Bulchem Aboyim to the tenth, and what will probably be the last Shia in the series of Shi'urim on the Nitziv's Hamagdava, which is the Nitziv of the Tzali Tzvi Huda Berlin Zatzal, his Magnus Opum on the Chomesh, which is the Hamagdava, in which the Nitziv attempts to actually do what we've spoken about, is to understand what we would call Pshut L'Sham the intended meaning of the scripture, um, and tries to base it, at least, right, on the um, on sources in Chazal, in the sages. And we still talk a little bit about what the Nitzvah has been trying to do, what, what the Shev tried to do, and um, his unique approach. Um, I want people to know that we've only, we've only scratched the surface. Um, I mean, I, I don't have to tell you how, what a very long and difficult and deep limud is the of the Teresh of the South, but given the Nitziv's apparent complete um, mastery of a um, scripture, diktuk, grammar, syntax, semantics, his overreaching understanding and knowledge of all of Chazal makes Amigdava to be really a limit of a lifetime. It's probably the towering accomplishment in um, Parshandut, in commentary um, of the 19th and probably the 20th century too. In any case, lo alecham lach ligmor, um, we're not going, I'm not going to, um, you know, mind shum is, is completely inadequate, but in any case, I try to, if I've inspired people to try to, try to understand the Netzif, that in my opinion will be the purpose of the Shi'orim. What I'd like to do um, for the last year is to focus on, we've, most of the things we focused on Rachel and Bereshis, partly because we're in the, we're, we're still, we're just in the Kislev, and we've been reading Parshas Bereshis, so I try a little bit to pin the Shi'urim on the, on the, on the, uh, the Parshas HaShavua, the Seidel. But in addition to that too, um, many of the fundamental things in the Tziv are actually stated at the very beginning of Bereshis. So, and Bereshis was a, is the part of the Chumis that most people know. When it comes to, I guess, Vayikra, Bamidbar, Shavos, Vayikra, and Devarim, most people know the relevant Gemaras, the Teresh Bial Peh. Teresh Bial for most people, um, usually, always begins, but usually ends with Bereshis. Um, so therefore, I thought that this was the place to really focus upon the, the Tzib's commentary. In any case, um, one of the most interesting um, Gemaras, one of the most interesting passages in Chazal, is in the Sech Shabbos, in Perakol Kisve, um, beginning on Gav Kuf Tezvav Seifa Mut Beis, and you know, continuing on Kuf Tezayin Mut Aleph. Um, the, if anyone who learns the Chumash will note that in Bamidbar, we're going to be focusing now on, on Chumash Bamidbar, anyone will, who learns Bamidbar will have noticed that there are two Psukim in um, Perak Yod, towards the end of Perak Yod, Psukim Laman Hei and Laman Vav, Vayib Ben Sayar Aaron Vayim Emeisha, and the two psukim um, are boxed in by two nun hafuchais, two upside down letters nun. And um, the Gemara discusses this. This clearly was something that I almost say in our tradition. The Gemara discusses this. And um, I'm going to read the Gemara. The Gemara says, Tanah Rabbanon, the rabbis learn, Aman Kuf Tezvav Seifam Udbeis, Vayi Ben Seira Aaron Vayemem Meisha. So Pausha Zu also la Kodesh Baruch Hu Simani Es Bilaman Lamata. Kodesh Baruch Hu, right, um, made signs both at the very beginning, the very the end of this. The Gemara calls this a Pausha. These two Pesukim are called a Pausha, right? That's what Rashi says. Lamal Lamata Berchilu Vasoif. Vayi Ben Seira Aaron. Beginning at the end, right? Loima, right? And these signs are, were, came or come to tell us she'ain zem mekoyma that actually these psukim are out of place. An interesting, a little bit of a shocking statement of Chazal that their psukim and the Torah are out of place. Says Rashi, what does it mean? 
She'en ze mekoyma, says Rashi, she'en a ruya lekan, right? That these um, psukim, um, in other words, are, are, are out of place, meaning that they have nothing to do with the subject matter, right? The la balichas vasoi is mishtoi la'el mena. El betgola vaysa ruya lekan, the pashat ba midbar sinai. In other words, if we look at where these two psukim um, appear in the Chumash, so the parasha immediately preceding them, which begins, I guess, in Perak Yud, Pasuk Chavtes, says we're going to be leaving Hasinai, right? And um, and and uh, in other words, and we'd like you to come along with us. And Yisrael says to Moshe Rabbeinu, no, he's going to go back to, right? He's going to go back to where he lives. And then after that, it says, Vayisume HaRashem. And then we have the two psukim. And then comes the Pasha, which begins in Parakir Allah. Pasuk Allah, the Pasha of the Misoidinim, those who complained um, in the Midbar. So now she says that this, in fact, actually, this... Um, this pasuk should not be here. This psukim should not be here. Right? Rashi says this psukim should be um, in parshas. Um, um, Rashi says parshas by midbar Sinai, but really um, we're in parshas by midbar Sinai. So, in other words, earlier, right? Earlier we have the um, earlier in um, parshas by midbar, but earlier in the um, in other words, earlier. We have um, the um, the the um, the the psukim, right? I would say Rashi says Bamidba, I would say probably Baloischa, and there it speaks about the Masse Bnei Yisrael and how the camp, how the Machina traveled, and the different the Golim, the different Shvatim within the Golim, and the Chayyim's psukim should be there. Um, but even if it's in, um, in other words, because it says, so we're speaking about Masais. So Masais, right, is not the subject matter of the previous parasha with Yisrael, that when Mishra requests from Yisrael, they should stay with them. But rather the Masais are really in, in um, Perak Yud, which speaks about the entire, the tra- in other words, the way the outline of the Machada, Machada Yisrael, the outline of, the, of, of, of Machada Yisrael, when it traveled, when it began traveling, right? It begins here in Parakut, Pasakut Aleph, right? Nala ha onam el Mishkan the Eidus, Vizman Israel Mas Ain the Bidbao, Al Piashem, Digl Machla Vid Yehuda, Vyal Tva Mata Bil Yasascha and the Salaban Tu, etc. etc. And we have the Masoyis. In other words, so why in fact do we have a, a, a an interruption where the, you have the Pausha of Mesha Middle speaking to Yisrael, and then you have been, and then after that it says they left Hal Sinai. And then all of a sudden, it's, they even say, it has really nothing to do with the immediate passages before and after. And then after that, we have the Messiah now. And that's what the Gemara says, She ain't the Mekayma. Rabbi Oim Eloim in Hashem, Uzeel Mepnei, She Sefer Chashu Mepnei Atzmai. Right? So, in other words, so Rabbi says, right, this is a Sefer Chashu Mepnei Atzmai. A Sefer in and of itself, Dami Rabbi Shmuel, Ben Nachman, Rabbi Yenison, in other words, that actually there are seven Sifrei Torah. Not only Chamisha Chumitah, but seven Sifrei Torah. In other words, Bamidbar itself is divided into three Sfarim, right? And Rabbi Shem Gamliel says, I see the Pasha should take Akim, Mikam, Itachab, and Koyma. In the future, this Pasha will be taken out of where it is and be placed in its proper place. I'm not going to go through the entire Gemara. We can spend several Shulam on the on the Shachavatai and the Gemara. But clearly, right, what we, clearly the Gemara is telling us, I mean, there is a dispute of Tanayim, it's not clear that they're necessarily arguing with each other, but clearly um, there is an in- intended insertion of these two psokim, which seem to divide Mamidbar into a first part of Mamidbar and a second part of Mamidbar. That's clearly what the Gemara is suggesting, or saying actually explicitly. Now, this is, of course, something for the Nitziv, HaOmag Dafa. And I want to speak about this because I think this is a very, very... Um, this is one issue, which... Well, this is one sugya, which is part of a very, very central 
um, phenomenon which we see in the Chomish, which I'll speak about towards the end. But the Nitziv actually addresses this. And the Nitziv, I might have actually referred to this in one of the previous Shi'orim, has a psicha to Sefer Ben Midbar, as he has a psicha to, um, to Orla Chamisha Chum Shatera. And the Nitziv um, speaks about that in Ben Midbar, we have a, like to call it, a change of paradigm, a changing of the generations, right? And um, and the Zim notices the difference in the Lashonis between the two Pekudim. I mean, the Bamidbar is referred to, let's see, in the Mishnah and Yuma, as Chaymish HaPekudim. And um, the fact is because we have two senses in Bamidbar. And the Zim actually, in several places, makes note of very subtle but clear changes in the two senses. And um, the Zim says, right, Mishum the Ikazah Sefer. The main part of Sefer Midbar, who hamachul v'shal lichas amashem b'chay olam, right, is the change in the halichas amashem, right, in the um, in the existence of Jewish people as they relate to a kaddish baruch hu b'chay olam in the world. Min adar shalchu b'midbar, from the derech in which they went in the midbar, shebe midbar hayu misnagu b'midas teferes. In the midbar, the hanhaga was midas teferes. Shahalach lamin Moshe. What does that mean? Who gami l'mayna be halichas of teva? In other words, in the midbar, the halichas of Klai Yisrael was something that was beyond the natural order. So they would transcend the natural order. L'mayna be halichas of teva. This is a theme that we've spoken about previously in the Sif. But El Yisrael halchu b'dawa chateva. But it came to El Yisrael, right? So therefore, the um, the um, the um, hanhaga. In other words, the the Jewish people, right, act and are directed and exist existentially within the confines of the natural order. And the providence, the divine providence, is something which is hidden. And the Nitziv actually says that the Shinoi actually begins, interesting, he locates the Shinoi in Pasha Chukas, when we have the Milchamais, um, right, Keneged Oigen Sichai. Right? But in other words, the Ziv mentions that we see in Bamidbar that there's a change, and of course, the Ziv brings a precious Rabba, Abba in Perek Gimel, I guess Pau Shehei, Vayabdel Elokim ben Oven Achoshech, God distinguished between day, day, between light and darkness, is that safe for Bamidbar? This is safe for Bamidbar, Shumabdu ben Yetzi ben Sarmin Bar Yaret. So therefore, the Ziv Bamidbar is actually a change of paradigm from a um, from a transcendental existence to a natural existence. Now, says the Nitziv, skip over some, a paragraph, says the Nitziv, V'aniyo da pizza kavana obu chazal b'shabbos daf kuf tazvav. Says the Nitziv that this is what chazal meant daf kuf tazvav. In other words, the Nitziv clearly understood the Gemara as requiring an explanation. What does chazal mean that there are seven sefei teira, pash v'le atzma, at asid alaf salam koima? So, says the Nitziv, Apiza kavona obu chazal b'shabbos kuf tazvav. Says by Ibitzer Aaron, who saved the free atzboy. Right? Once again, we saw that Shita of Rebbe there was, these two psukim are pash for the atzboy. Lulamdeinu, to come to, right, to come to, um, to teach us. Vashir kitchila shino yamin vayem vis adinim. The shinoi begins, the change begins, vayim ba'am kemis adinim. Now, we're just going to, just we'll say what the, the Tziv, we'll just, let's say, read and translate the Tziv, then we'll try to explain him. The Tziv wants to claim that there's a change in paradigm from a supernatural, from a transcendental existence to a physical, to a natural existence. And it begins in, he says, it begins, the change begins. Right? In Parakyodal, it begins in I'm it's interesting because the Tziv understands that really the change was later on in Parachov um, Pasakei, in Parachov Pasakei, in Parashas um, Chukas. There, right? Um, in other words, they, uh, actually, there they came to. Um, actually, he says um, he explained it in the Parachov Pasakei. Right, this explains it there, but actually the change really begins when the Eidah comes to Midbatsin, Bachodesh Arishan, right? 
and Miriam dies there, and then they start complaining. And then there's the chait. This is the chait of the hitting on the rock. But it seems that like the change begins over here with the mesoidinim, right? Which is in, begins in um, Parak Yudalev, right? Since they were noyeh the midas at teferes, right? They had lived; they were living the trend of existence. Therefore, they were punished. Because there's a a greater hashkocha. Now, I want to explain really what the Nitziv is saying over here, because there's a interesting point, and I I don't think I mean I'm saying this lefiyani is dating. Quite the impoverishment of my of my thinking that the Tzivat actually requires more explanation here. <coughs> the fact is is that if a person looks at the Chumash, he'll see that there's a certain parallelism between Bamidbar and Shemais. Now in Parshas um, um, in Beshalach, we see that even after Al Sinai, the people complain, right? They came to Mora, but we don't see punishment. We don't see a Kodesh Baruch who punishes them. In the complaints in Bamidbar, we see punishment. And this is an interesting, um, in other words, in Shemais we don't see punishments. We don't see, we don't see for example, in Mala, they were punished. We don't see they were punished. On the contrary, they were the Kodesh Baruch Hu, Yashlech Eitz. What? It was Masak Lamaya. You never noticed it, Rabbi Sadli. But where they're punished, where they're punished, I mean, this, the, the Slav, according to the, the, the Chet Ha'egel, but where they, no, but also too, by the Slav too, really, they, they were given the man. They were given the man. The punishments, the, um, the, um, the pestilences, right? The, um, the Magaifas, I mean, of course, the Zegel is also something different. The Magaifas, for punishments, really appear in Bamidba. And no... Less than the Bukhar Shor raises this question. We see that we see a very interesting um, parallelism in the events in Shmois after they left Al Sinai, the Chayra before Matan Teva, and in the events in Bamidbar, beginning in Baaloischa. And what's interesting is is that when clients will complain to the Midbar, because they're giving the man was, we don't see punishments. The punishments really begin with the misoidinim. And Pasha's Chukas, in, um, in, um, in, right, in Pasha's Chukas, um, in other words, so the question, and the Bechor Shur points this out. Bechor Shur seems to point this out. That the, there seems to be a parallelism of events between Shemais and Bamidba. But the crucial difference is that in Shemais, we don't have divine retribution, and then we have divine retribution. This is really the question behind what the comment here of the Nitziv. Nitziv, as much as Nitziv wrote, right, because the Galatav of Bechasa, right, Alpayim. But in any case, the Nitziv says the beginning of the change, well, Begin, the beginning of the change begins in Bamidba. Actually, it was, let me put this in the Tziv. In other words, because they were living, as the Tziv says, um, because they were living, the Midas Teferis, the Anhaga was Lamaila bin Atefa, because of that, their complaints were met with punishment and retribution and Magaifas. That's what the Tziv says. And finally, right? But this is the beginning. This is, this is the beginning of this change. And finally, in Perachov, in Parashat Chukas, you have, in fact, actually, that the the chait of Moshe Rabbeinu, Moshe Aaron at the cellar, and the Nesiv there says that, in fact, there at that point there was actually a the, the change actually was taking place. In other words, there, there was a turnaround. From Hanhagas to Malam and Ateva to Hanukkah Zateva. Right? From an existence beyond nature to within nature. That's what Sev writes. He writes this in, in tremendous detail. He writes this in Parachaf, Pas, um, Pasakein Bamidbar, in Chukas, and also, um, right? And also in Pasak Vav too. 
In fact, the chait of Moshe Rabbeinu is the tziv because the hitting of the rock was more to um, bring the water somehow by hitting the rock. That's how people believe that's more of a scientific way of bringing the rock. Just like the, the pizza of the of the Maklis, of Yaakov Avinu, which the you know, Bach understands to be like a Del HaTeva, and Moshe Rabbeinu was supposed to have spoken to the rock. Spoken to the rock. And, in fact, actually, this was the Chet. And because of that, after that, then, all of a sudden, that's Meber Eva, Moshe Rabbeinu, right, is ordered they will not come to El Yisrael, and then all of a sudden, you have the great victories on Sichel and Oik. The great victories that that begins that begins Klaishol's coming into El Jazeera, so that's the turnaround right around there. So Nitziv wants to understand that there's actually this paradigm has a beginning and an end. The beginning begins with the punishment, meaning there were no b'derecha atif eves, transcending the natural realm. People still complain, and because of that, there was retribution. And then the people demanded. Teva. They demanded more Teva. That's why they wanted the Baraglim to go to spile El Yisrael. In other words, the people at this point were not willing to live on this level, on this transcendental level, Lamaila and Teva. And this finally leads to this turnabout which takes place in Pashat Chukas. Everything becomes Teva. And of course, the victories of Sikh and Oik, even though they are Nisim, the Nisim Nistalif. They're not Nisim Galuya. And that's the end of the Nisim Galuyim. And the Tzivah says that this is the change of the Chumas. Now, so what is essentially the Tzivah coming to tell us is that within the Chumash, or the interesting the Tzivah here is that the Chumash is not flat land. There's a change of paradigm within the Chumash itself. It's Chas V'Sholem, not two documents or three documents. Chas V'Sholem, but rather the Nitziv is coming to mirror what will be a general outlook on Jewish historiography that the relationship between Klai Yisrael and Kodesh Baruch changes within history that is the Chamish Kutzatayim which is a microcosm of all of Jewish history and this in a certain sense this theme of the Nitziv of the change of paradigm mirrors not only the Nitzvah's Havdama to Ha'amak Sha'ala, and there his famous Perosh on the shield, this is where the Nitzvah actually speaks about the changes that took place in the Teresh Bialpeh, right? From Das to Eish. And in fact, this is a theme which we first encountered in a more basic form. Ashebola Kim Lasa is the Nitzvah that says that changes in the biological and natural order are an expression of the continued hashkocha of a Kaddish Baruch on the world in general, a Klai Yisrael in particular. So in other words, the very important theme of the Nitziv, the very important theme of the Nitziv, which is the changes that take place in the world as being an expression of continual hashkocha, not only does the Nitziv point this out in his commentary in Bereshis, Ashabol Kim Lasis, but also the general national relationship with the divine, right? Also changes in the course of the Chumash, and that's precisely what Chazal is speaking about in Kol Kisve. And that's what Parshas Bamidbar is. Parshas Bamidbar is a shift from a transcendental to a natural mode of existence, and in fact, that is expressed by the fact that Chazal saw that the two psukim of Vayi ben Saya Ari, separated by the two, two Nunan Hafuchas, the two Simonias, right, is expressing the fact that actually the Chumash at this time divides here, and that there's in fact a change in paradigm in the Hanhaga of Klai Yisrael. That's what the Sib understands. Now, the fact is, is that this requires a lot of explanation because. The Nitziv actually, in other words, faces a little bit of a, a technical problem, namely that according to the Nitziv, the changes take place really in Pasha Chukas, by Meim Riva, mm-hmm. and the Chet of Moshe Rabbeinu. Um, the Nitziv isolates the beginning of the change, as, or actually the change is being brought about, 
through the misoinanim, the Klaisho complains, right? In the Midbar, in the Asaf Suf, right? And they want to go back to Mitzrayim, right? And because of this, there is, in fact, actually a certain amount of um, divine retribution, which is parallel, but the reaction, the divine reaction, is very, very much dissimilar to that of the Mun, which we witness in Pasus Bishalach. And then, in a certain sense, the Nitziv is not addressing. It's not addressing, but that, the, therein, in other words, in other words, in other words, the basis of the Nitziv's question really comes from the fact that the, why do we see divine retribution here and not in So in a certain sense, the way I understand, I want to amplify the Nitziv, you can decide yourselves whether this is the Kavanah that Tziv is, is that I want to claim that even though Chazal speak about seven Sfar, because the Midbar is divided into three parts, mm-hmm. I would say that Shmois actually extends into Bamidbar. In other words, basically, in Shmois we see the complaints of Klai Yisrael, in a certain sense, complaints of Klai Yisrael, um, are not met with, met with divine retribution and divine punishment, right? So, in other words, in the, the difference between Shemais and between Bamidbar would be that in Bamidbar, right, there's, there are punishments. There are punishments. And because of this, there's this change that takes place from Perak Yudal to Perak in which, in fact, says the Tziv, there'll be a change of the paradigm of divine providence, from Lamaila Teva to Teva, which really takes, I mean, with actually goes into effect in Pasha's Kukas. But in other words, one could say in a certain sense that the relationship between Klai Yisrael and HaKadosh Baruch Hu, in terms of punishment, right, for complaints, actually, um, the Shmois aspect, Shmois dimension, actually goes up to Perak Yudalaf, begins there. However, what's interesting is, is that if a person will notice is that in fact it's still called Pasha Bamidba, Sefer Bamidba, right? We suddenly is you had a question look at Pasha Bamidba. Why is it Bamidba? Right. Right. Because there's another parallelism. The other parallelism is is that the the Mishkan is detailed in Sefer Shemais, mm-hmm. right? It's detailed in Sefer Shemais. It's detailed um, in Pasha's. Um, um, in, 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 in two pastures, the story in Shubin yeah. Tetafe, before the Chet yeah. and then after that, it's detailed in Vayakal Pakude. But what's interesting is if a person actually looks in, and, and, the, and, 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 the, and, the, and the, the main the, the, the people, the main group of people doing the Abed, of course, are the Kahanim. In Parshas Bamidbal, we don't have the construction of the Mishkan, but we have the construction of Machin Yisrael around the Mishkan. Around the Mishkan, right? The Degolim and the Mishkan. And in fact, actually, that's, um, that's answered the question that's actually raised by the Gemara. That in fact, by Tzibat Sarah is not in the right place. Because really, the, the Siyasa Aaron should be in the beginning of Bamidba, where we have all of Klai Yisrael encamped around the um, uh, encamped around the um, around the um, around the Mishkan. Now, what's interesting is is that um, we see an interesting thing that, and the Siv points this out. The Siv um, points this out that there is also too an interesting change that we see in the nature of the Torah that is in fact being taught, or the Gilo, the relationship comes back to Moshe Rabbeinu, and the Torah of Moshe Rabbeinu, right? Mipia um, Gvura. Most of you remember that, um, that at the very, very end of Pekute, he speaks about Moshe Rabbeinu could not come into the, into the Mishkan because the other covered the Mishkan. This is a very famous Chazal which Rashi brings. He brings, right, he brings a stira because here it says Moshe Rabbeinu could not come into the Mishkan and then the end of Bamidbar, which is actually um, Perak Zayin, at the end of Perak Zayin, plus Peites, but Shemar comes into the Mishkan, so Rashi says, Shnei Ksumbam, Rashi Shnei Ksuvim, Ba Kaso Shlishi, Yachir Benayim, because the other was up and above, what, what's that coming to tell me? It's an obvious, in other words, if I know that Moshe Benu cannot come into the Mishkan at the end of Shemois, because mm-hmm. there's an Anon there, mm-hmm. but it says because there was an Anon there, 
right? And at the end of Pasha Nasa, he says he cannot come. So clearly the reason is obvious at the end of Pasha Pekuta, because, you know, when the other would live, he'd come in there. But what's very interesting is, is that the Tzip points this out. In um, Paragzayim Peites, where it says, V'voy Meshel Aaron El Oyen Moi V'dabi V'dabi Itoi, V'yishmas Kol M'dabi L'Biyal HaKapoyis, Moshe Meno enters into the to the Mishkan, and he and he goes into the Kosher Gadoshim, and, and he hears the coil from the Kapoyis, mm-hmm. right? So the Tzif says, this is the beginning of Tegel Shabi Al Peh. The Tzif is Medayek. I'm here in Parak Zion, Pasuk Peites. It says, Ledabi Itoi. Says the Tzif, Loshin Itoi, Mashmo Shnei Medabli. Itoi is as he's speaking with Moshe Rabbeinu. Like it says in Shmois Rabba, Mem Allah for the Pazur, Kekalos Ledabi Itoi, Shutea Shabi Al Peh. Shea Moshe Shal Kosh Meshiv. And that's what it says, that in fact it speaks about Teresh V'alpeh, meaning like this. In Parashas Pekudeh, the Teresh that's revealed to Moshe Rabbeinu is, I'll call it is really Teresh V'achsav. There isn't an input to Moshe Rabbeinu. And that's why, and that's what's called the Aaron, is being Mechasa. I mean the Adam is being Mechasa, the Aaron, the, the, the Mishka. Moshe Rabbeinu can't get in there, it's called all Teresh V'achsav. There's no place for a human being. At the end, a Pasha's Nasai, already Moshe Rabbeinu could come in. Why can he come in? Because that's Teresh Bielpeh. There's a place for human intellect. That's what Simba's pointing out. So really, the Shnei Aksuvim, Machshim Zetzer, Ad Shiyova, Kodosh Lish Bechir B'neir, which Rashi speaks about at the end of Pekute, is not somehow a stira, but it's pointing out the difference, the distinction between the Torah, which Moshe Rabbeinu learns at the end of Pasha Shemois, and the Torah that he learns in Bamidba. Because there's a change, from, there's a, actually a change in paradigm from Torah Shemirsa to Torah Shemirpeh. It's interesting that the Gemara, I think it's Bundar Dun Hayin Yuma, who come up to this in a few months in the Daf Yemi, Mitzvah those of you who learn Daf Yemi, that there's a famous Machlech between the Stuk and the Prushin. Do I put the, do I put the Gacheles? on the Keteris before I enter, before the Kohen Gola enters the Kosh Kodosh Yom Kippur, okay, keep on a or do I first enter into the, do I first enter into the, um, into the, the Kosh Kodosh and then I make the other Keteris. I think maybe we spoke about this somewhere else, but in any case, the, the answer is that the Tztukim didn't believe in Teresh Bial Peh. So when man enters the Kosh Kodosh, there's no place for man. The Onan is filling up the Mishka. That's mm-hmm. Shemais. But the Bruti, Chazal believed in the Teresh Bial Peh. Man enters, the Kohen Gadol enters into the Kosher um, Gadoshim without an honor. And then he, when he learns Teresh, he makes an honor. He makes an honor to like So in other words, and, and of course the Chazal learn, even though most of you were only up to the first few daf of Yuma, you all know that that, that the the Kayin going into the Kosh Gadoshin is likened to Moshe Rabbeinu going up to Halsina. So, in any case, without any droshes, what I'm saying is, is that there is clearly a change of paradigm to the Psukim dealing with the Mishkan, emphasize more from the aspect of Tere Shemiyat Versav. The Psukim in Pashas Nosen, or the Pashas, emphasize more the nature of Tere Shemiyat now, the Nitziv himself, as I said before, it points this out over here, and this will figure out in the Nitziv's parish on Devarim, according to the Nitziv Devarim, is Mamish Pilpuli Shal Teira. And the Nitziv speaks about that at length in his commentary and beating of Devarim. But that's, of course, something that we will not um, enter into in these series of Shiram. In any case, what I wanted to point out is that the Nitziv, um, using Chazal, was very sensitive in what he understood to be the changes of paradigm in Halicha Yisrael as expressed throughout the course of the Chumash, both in Hashkocha and both in the Teres Hashem, Teres Shachsav, Teres Shbiyalpeh. These two things, in a certain sense, are related and parallel. And this is the fundamental, a fundamental um, Guide for the Nitziv and his Pegosh emphasizing continued Hashgacha throughout the course of the 
pentatical text or the hexatical text, whatever, septical text, whatever, chutzva, shiva, seven. Pentateuch is um, Pentateuch, five. Septateuch? Septateuch, whatever it is. Septateuch. Septateuch. I don't know, whatever it is. In any case, we'll leave this for the um, those of you who are back in Latin. Yeah. In any case, so in other words, this is a very important theme in the Cis Parish in general, right? Ashabolikim Lasois, that change is not only natural changes, but in in Chodesh Baruch God's providence of the nature of the world, but also changes in man's relationship with the Kaddish Baruch Hu is in fact actually part of the Ikri Amuna. The man's relationship with God is continuous, and continuous is always expressed through change. If there's no change, it's not continuous. It's a form of deism. Um, that's good to know. Now, um, so I think, um, I think we're going to actually end over here. I know that we haven't really gotten anything very deeply. I've sort of like set you know, guideposts for the future. Um, but in a certain sense, limud of the Nitzivs, Ha'omek Dov, is something which is missing in a, an age in which the only, it would seem that the majority of people really understand the text of the Chumash are not going to the Messiah of Yisrael Saba. So it's important that the Nitziv be learned, if these, like I said before, these Shi'ur have contributed towards inspiring anyone to learn Ha'omek Dov, to understand the Devar Hashem. As expressed in the Vuh Meshir Rabbeinu, in the Chumash, in the Teira, Taksuva Basura Biadeinu, then then our efforts here in Ashkar for Sakal Daka will be more than rewarded. Okay, from an undisclosed place in Yerushalayim, we'll be in touch with Yitzchak Hashem, and um, be well and cultivated.